day, those he said confu who confuse rhetoric with reality. Speaking in an area where supporters are booming, Senator Barry Goldwater's chances for the 1964 Republican nomination, Kennedy said that ignorance and misinformation, if allowed to prevail in foreign policy, yes, we will handicap this country's this is security. Frank McGee, NBC News. Put Mr. McNeil on, please. This is Robin McNeil, our correspondent who has been traveling Hello, with the Bob. president. Bob, are you there? This is Frank McGee. Bob, I'm in 5HN. We are on the air. You take it from the top, Bob, and tell us everything that you know, if you would, please, in chronological order. Starting at the very top, unless you have some late information on the president's condition. Frank, uh, I'm informed you'll have to repeat that we're not hearing. Uh, Bob, Bob, I'm sorry. We're having some uh, difficulties with our communication here, and apparently your broadcast, the early part of it, did not get on the air. Would you begin again? Yes, go again, please, Bob. They're not getting the, the other uh, end of the conversation, Bob, Frank. I'm sorry. You'll have I, to I'll repeat. tell you what, let's do. Let's do it this way. You speak slowly, and I'll repeat what you say. All right, this is Robert McNeil reporting from Dallas. Now, please go ahead, Bob. Bob is at the hospital in Dallas, where the president has been rushed. The president is seriously wounded. This information comes from Texas Senator Ralph Yarbrough, who was with the president. The shots which wounded the president occurred as the motorcade. was running through huge crowds in downtown Dallas. The governor of Texas, John Connolly, was also hit. Uh, the Texas governor was sitting on the far side of the car across from the president. Mrs. Kennedy, who was seated between them, was not wounded. The shots apparently came from a window in a building overlooking the parade route. But about one street back from it, shielded by some trees. Police who immediately fanned out around the area interviewed several witnesses who said, who said they saw a man with a gun in the window. Bob informs me that he was in the motorcade. He says he was able to hear the shots. They stopped, and as the shots rang out, people lining the streets screamed and lay down on the sidewalk and in the street. The motorcade immediately speeded up. and rush the president straight to the Parkland Memorial Hospital from which you're speaking now, Bob. <coughs> and the president was carried in bleeding. Bob, have you any information on how many times or where the president was struck? <laughs> Bob does not know how many times or where the president was struck. All he knows is that the president was seriously wounded, and that is the latest information that they have. Think about what you're going to say uh, when you Bob go on says in. He heard three shots. Another reporter at the scene says he heard four. Uh, turning to the Texas governor, Bob, can you tell us how many times or where he may have been? I see, Bob. Now, one further question. Can you tell us anything about yeah. the man who was seen with the gun in the window? Has he been placed under a... Put the phone on. They say that he was a white man. Go ahead. Put the phone on. The there were a lot of Negro people around, but the man seen in the window was a white man. What kind of gun was it, Bob? Was it a rifle? The, a policeman has told Bob that he heard, the policeman heard that it was a high-powered rifle, but there's been no confirmation of that. Just a moment, Bob. Please stand by. Hold on to Bob. I think we have a gadget here, Frank. That... Put the receiver on that, Frank, and apparently it will function as a speaker. And let Bob talk. Uh, Bob, I'm told that this little thing I've just attached to the telephone... Uh, 
Bud, could you say a few words for us? You're still there. Uh, now, is this being uh, broadcast, what, what is saying there now? That's right. I see. Yep. Bob, I'll tell you what, I realize that you're in a, in a terrible position. You cannot get information as long as you're on the phone, but do you think it would, you would be better advised to remain on the phone or to break the connection and get back in touch with it? Your judgment. Um, I think I would be uh, better advised. Yes, Bob. This, this is being heard, what he is saying. Yes, sir. Over this microphone here. What's your job, Bob? Uh, I have a, hello? Yes, Bob. I, I have a medical student here. We're going to hold this line open for me. All right. And if you'll just chat with him, I'll have somebody else to chat with him until I come back in about five minutes. That's, that's fine, Bob. We'll be expecting you, and I'll keep the phone uh, and, and be talking okay, with the student. Bob, we'll know when you come back. Thank you, Bob, very much. Uh, Frank, uh, to... To interrupt for a moment, there is this from Dallas. Uh, while Robin McNeil is on the phone, of course, he is unable to gather information. President Kennedy has been given blood transfusions at Parkland Hospital in an effort to save his life after he and Governor John Connolly of Texas were shot in an assassination attempt. Uh, the word still is that the president is in very serious condition. Other reports say he is in critical condition. Uh, Governor John Connolly, I think Chet has been moved, has he not? Yes, we have this information which adds up to uh, something rather inconclusive. It says the Secret Service said the president remained in the emergency room and the governor was moved to the general operating room of Parkland Hospital. One Secret Service man was overheard telling another that there was no need to move the president because emergency facilities were entirely adequate in the emergency room. Uh, that would indicate uh, just a sort of a snap judgment evaluation that Governor Conley was worse wounded than the president. But as I say, that is only a snap judgment evaluation. Or it, it could mean, Chet, that they are, are separating the two cases so that each can be given full attention. Right. The uh, medical student who is on the line with me says he can see outside a window and that a sizable crowd has gathered outside the hospital. Uh, this telephone line, by the way, is connected to the hospital. Uh, what is the name of the hospital? Parkland. Park Parkland, Parkland Memorial. Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas, Texas, where the president and the governor have been taken. And NBC's Robert McNeil is getting the latest information now, and should be getting back on the line with us very shortly. Again, to repeat, the president uh, and Governor John Connolly have been wounded. Uh, they were both shot as they rode in a motorcade through Dallas.